Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about two subjects on my way to Pigot. I'm not going to document my drive to Pigot. I've done that enough. Um, but if you're interested, I've done two hypermiling videos on the way back from Pigot twice. Just go to my channel, Jay McFink, and look for hypermiling videos and you'll find them. But uh, I'm going to cover level two charging. Do you really need it at your house? It's quite expensive to get a level two and you know hooked up if you don't already have the outlet there. And um, do you really need a level two or is level one good enough for your situation? Another, another thing I'm going to talk about is, you know, I've never even driven an electric car until I got this one in May. I've driven it, you know, all summer now. Now that the weather is changing, how much longer can I drive this car? I know I can drive around town during the winter. I know I can, you know, go here and there. But how much longer can I go to places like Pickett, which is at the edge of my range even in summer? You know, um... I can't remember how many miles I usually have when I get back from Pigot. I'd have to look at my past videos and see. And some of those shouldn't count because they were hypermiling. But I'm thinking if I drove regular speed limit, I'd get back with less than 10 miles. I'm thinking 5 to 15. Well, okay. not Maybe not less than 10. 5 to 12 miles left would be my guess. It's one of those trips where even in summer, I'm thinking I may have to slow down a little bit for a short distance just to ensure that I'll make it home. So how much longer can I go to Pigot? you know, with the weather changing. I mean, it's 56 degrees today in Northeast Arkansas. I came out to my car to take this trip and I had to go back in and get a jacket. 56, <sighs> still a little chilly. Now, Aaron J, if he's watching this, then he's probably laughing at me, 56 degrees and it's chilly. He's probably like, okay, whatever. You're a geek, you're a dork, shut up and move up north where I'm at and you'll really see cold. You know, but, um, <laughs> anyway, Okay, so uh, here we go, and I'm, I'm going to record, while I'm talking, I'm going to record going down the road because, face it, I'm not much to look at. I figure you'd rather look at the road than look at me, and I need to get there anyway. Man, I really, really like this car. I love this 2015 Spark EV. I just wish I had more range. Instead of 75 miles, if I could get 150 miles out to this car, Man, that'd be awesome. If I could, if this car would just go 150 miles, I'd be as happy as a dog with two peckers. I'm serious. I'd, I'd be so ecstatic. It'd be awesome. But that's not reality. So reluctantly, I will trade it in someday for something I probably won't like as much, but it will go a lot farther and it'll be the best thing. I guess I'm doing three subjects today. I didn't mean to get on this subject. Enough of this. I won't talk about it anymore. Not on this video. Okay. Let's get to uh, why I'm worried about how much longer I'll be able to drive this car. You know, to everywhere I now go. Like, in December and January, I really don't think I'll be able to make this trip to Pickett. I'll have to take the ICE vehicle. Here's why. Let's uh, hit auto, which you can do that down here too. Temperature. Okay, look at this. Now I've got it set on, whoops, I've got it set on, let's put on, let's say I'm freezing, put on 84, look at that, 89%, the heater is running, 89% of the possible energy. During the summer, even when it was 100 degrees, I don't think that even, I know it didn't get to 80%, I'm thinking it stayed in the 60s most of the time. I'm thinking air conditioner doesn't hurt the battery near as much as the heat does as far as range. You know, and I could turn it down to a more reasonable 76. And right now, it's still using 78%, 77%, and it's only 55 degrees outside. Let's turn this off. I can't afford to run it. So anyway, that's why I'm concerned that uh, I may not be able to drive, I, which I knew when I bought this car. I knew when I bought it, that might be a problem. Yeah, like I said, I knew when I bought this car that winter driving was going to be a problem because of its limited range. You know, and uh, I wish the heated seats worked better. You know, because they put heated seats in almost every electric car for free for a reason, hoping you won't have to run the heater. And this is only the second time I've used these heated seats, but I'm telling you, they're not uh, that great. They're, they're just not. And they only have one setting. 
you know but when it gets really cold maybe i can tell a big difference maybe it's just the fact that it's only 50 degrees and it's been a while since i've used heated seats maybe i just don't remember i'm almost certain that my wife's ice vehicle if you turn the heated seats on high i'm almost i'm thinking that they're almost painful they're so hot so i don't know but anyway um will i be, will i be able to drive to picket will i be able to drive to the edge of jonesboro and back which that would be from my house um probably high 50s now most people 55 60 miles most people say you lose 20 to 30 percent in winter um now if i can get 75 miles let's put it in the middle 25 percent uh then that would be uh 22 and a half miles 25 percent so let's call it 25 50 miles man 50 miles with the heat on being comfortable boy that's that's not many miles that's not many at all uh actually that'd be a third that'd be a third i used to be good at math i don't know what happened so 25 percent 75 miles 10 percent seven and a half 20 percent is 15 half of that 18 and a half yeah 18 and a half miles i would drop if i lose 25 percent so let's call it 20 that's 55 miles that, wow that's a big help that extra five miles you know we'll see i'm kind of anxious to see what happens this winter i'm also scared to death what's going to happen this winter you know uh middle of winter i can't afford to trade the car that's just that just off the table cannot happen you know for one with one with more range because it would just cost too much um but we'll see what's gonna happen this winter uh, we're gonna see how many miles I put on my ice vehicle just because I can't drive this one and then uh, make a decision next spring But me and this car we don't have years together. I'm almost certain as much as I like it. We don't have years together We may not have months together We'll see But I'm not going back to a gas vehicle. I don't care. I don't care if I had to put it up all winter I'm not going back to a gas vehicle. That's how much I like these EVs and, uh, you know, me and my wife, we could share a vehicle if we really wanted to anyway. Uh, she works Monday through Friday, and I work Saturday and Sunday. Friday sometimes. So, um, yeah, we could share a vehicle. Anyway, ooh, I'm kind of scared. Just enough wreck there on my way home. I've got 21 miles to go and 38 miles left on the gasometer, leaving 17 miles. Which brings us to our next subject. Do you need a level two charger at home? Only you can answer that. I do not. And what made me think about this subject today is I bought my car in May. May 8th, I think, is when it was delivered. I have to look at my records and see, but I know it was May. June, July, August, September. This is the end of September, so I've had almost five months. In about another week or so, it'll be five months. Today will only be the second time and all that time that I could have used a level two charger. I really needed one. Because I had to go to Pickett and Rector today. I didn't have to, but I really needed to. So anyway, when I get back, I predict, now, like I said, 22 miles to go uh, to the house, 37 miles on the gasometer. You'd think that'd leave 15 miles, but it won't. Because from Rector, I mean from Marmaduke to my house, it's pretty bad on the kilowatt hours, you know, miles per kilowatt hour. So I won't have 15. I predict I'll have about 10 miles when I get back. But tonight, we're going to Jonesboro, which is about uh, 50 miles round trip at most. If we go to the edge of Jonesboro, it's about 24 miles round trip. And 50 is too far. It's not 50 miles. It's, uh, I'm sorry, let me start over. 18 miles one way to the edge of Jonesboro. So anywhere between 36 and 50 miles, yeah. There's no way with my level one charger I'm gonna get enough energy in this battery by the time we leave to make that trip, not safely. And not where my wife would be freaking out. Because that's one reason she's not fond of electric cars. She's one that if the gas hand gets down to a quarter of a, ga a tank, she starts getting really nervous. So I don't care. You know, she don't mind going to Jonesboro with me if we have a full battery, but she's not going to go with me on a 45 mile round trip trip if the uh, gasometer shows even 60 miles. 15 miles is just too close for her. So anyway, tonight when we go to Jonesboro, we're going to have to um, take her ice vehicle, her SUV. 
because there, you know, uh, when I get home, there's not gonna be enough juice in the battery by the time I get there and by the time we leave to make the trip safely. So anyway, I don't need a level two. I've needed one twice in five months. That means it's not worth the money to me. You, on the other hand, might need one every day. Depends on how you drive. Now, level one for most people is free because most people already have one um, installed in the outside of their house they can get to. I mean, the electricity is not free, but, char but the charging equipment is free for a lot of you. It's already there. The infrastructure is already in place. Almost very, 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 very few people have a level two charger, you know, 200, you know, which is like a dryer plug or a level two charging station. Very few have one of those on the outside of their house. Some do, but most don't. So if you don't, that means you have to install a, uh, the wiring and the uh, charging station. And that can get quite expensive. Like me, I don't have, I have a 110 on the outside of my carport. So I would have to uh, hire an electrician, have him go into the fuse box, and add a 40 or 50 amp breaker, which I have room for, run the wires up the wall, through the attic, down the wall, and install either a uh, 220 outlet or a uh, charging station. Now charging stations, most people pay, I'm thinking between four and eight hundred dollars. That's a big range, there's a lot of different ones out there. On top of the electrician's fees for doing this, in Arkansas, where most things are cheaper, I'm thinking an electrician will probably do this for me for probably a couple hundred dollars, maybe even a hundred and fifty, but I'm thinking probably two hundred dollars plus the materials. So if I've spent four hundred for a charging station, probably 250 dollars for the wiring and the electrician fee and all that you're talking about 700 bucks why in the world would i spend 700 dollars if i only need it twice in five months yep i don't need it but if i drove a round trip 60 miles to work every day and i had to do it monday through friday that I would need a level two charger, and yes, it'd be worth it. I'd have no choice but to do it because uh, it wouldn't have enough energy the next day on trickle charging to get me back to work, probably. So you have to ask yourself, how often are you gonna need that level two? And how important is it to you? And heck, even if you don't need it, if you just want it, just cause you want it, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. If you can afford it and you want it just cause you want it, I get it. Today we're just talking about need though. There's a difference between wanting and need, and there's nothing wrong with buying something you want. And, uh, but uh, most people I think don't need it, or oh, I won't say that. A good portion of people who think they need it realize they don't probably after they get an electric car. I thought for sure I was gonna need one. I, was, I looked at the cost of getting an electric car. I had to get a level two installed. And I got this plan on charging the level one for a few weeks then having a level two installed and I realized I just didn't need it. Simple as that. So anyway, hope I didn't ramble too much. You know, but um, that's about all. If y'all have any comments or suggestions, just put them below. And I'll put, uh, if I can remember, I'll put a couple of links to a couple of chargers at Amazon that seem to be quite popular. The juice box, a lot of people get the juice box. And you don't have to get a charging station. Let me say this. You can get a charging cord. That thing is about 200 bucks. I'll make sure I put a link to that in the description too. But the problem is, it'll do a max of 16 amps. And most charging stations will do 30, 40, or 50 amps. The more amps, the faster it charges. Of course, you gotta have the wires and the breaker to support that. So if you want a 50 amp break, if you want a 50 amp charging station, uh, you need at least a 50 amp breaker and the wiring which I don't know I'm thinking it would be maybe number four wire. I can't remember. You better not listen to me. You better get an electrician ask him But man my cruise control all of a sudden just kicked off for some reason anyway Kind of scared me. I thought the car was dying. All right But anyway, you have to have the wiring the breaker and all that to support whatever level charging you want to do so, uh, but this cord, which is a lot cheaper, it only do a 16 amp. Now, for the Spark EV, from what I understand, if I'm not wrong, the
the maximum it'll take is 16 amps. So it'll work for a Spark EV, but if you want to future proof uh, what you're doing, you may want to get something to do, you know, 40 or 50 amps. So anyway, there you go. I don't need a level two, but you might. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for listening to my rambling. I appreciate it. I know I can be, uh, I know I can bloviate with the best of them. Y'all have a good day. And remember, chicks dig scars and electric cars. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.